In the past several months, you probably heard politicians and business executives argue that Congress needs to cut the corporate tax rate in order to make American companies globally competitive. It's not a crazy idea. Our corporate tax rates are among the highest in the world, even if relatively few companies actually pay full freight. But is the whole truth about competitiveness in American companies? Well, let's see. Jeff Immelt ran General Electric for 16 years. He retired last summer. During Immelt's time at the helm of that company, GE stock plunged by almost 30 percent. It lost about $150 billion of its value. GE stock was the single worst performer on the Dow during that period. And yet here's the remarkable thing. When Jeff Immelt retired from GE, he received a severance package that could be worth more than $210 million almost a quarter of a billion dollars. That's, of course, in addition to the salary and bonuses he received during a 35-year career at that company. After Immelt announced his retirement, Jack Brennan, the former CEO of Vanguard and the lead independent member of the GE board, said that Jeff Immelt had, quote, positioned the company incredibly well for the future. Well, if that all sounds bizarre to you, you clearly haven't been paying attention to the way big American companies are run these days. Consider the case of Marissa Mayer, a longtime Google executive. Mayer spent five years running the tech giant Yahoo. During that time, she became one of the most famous business leaders in America and definitely one of the richest. How did Yahoo do? Well, under Mayer's leadership, Yahoo's business model collapsed completely. The company shed half its employees. Meanwhile, Yahoo neglected its most basic duties to its customers, you and me, allowing massive privacy breaches that exposed users' personal data to hackers. In the face of all of this, Mayer sat for an endless series of gauzy media profiles, including a spread in the fashion magazine Vogue. As her company was failing, Mayer threw a Wizard of Oz-themed photo shoot with fellow executives that cost 70 grand. In the end, I think all would agree Mayer's tenure was a total disaster. Yahoo's core business was sold to Verizon for less than $5 billion. That's a $95 billion discount from what it was once worth. And yet somehow, in return for presiding over Yahoo's destruction, Marissa Mayer became richer than ever. She collected a total of $239 million in compensation from that company. That's $900,000 for every week she spent mismanaging it. Now, in an earlier age, this would be called looting. The media would have attacked Marissa Mayer as a living symbol of incompetence and greed. Angry Yahoo employees might have picketed her house. And yet that's not what happened. Liberals celebrated Marissa Mayer as a feminist hero. She currently serves on the board of Walmart. All is well for her. Remember all this the next time somebody tells you that corporations need a bigger tax cut than you do. There are many reasons that American companies may not be competitive in world markets. Tax rates are just one of them. Congressman Mike Kelly is a Republican. He represents Pennsylvania. He joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you, Tucker. So I was talking to someone in my neighborhood uh, yesterday. He's a dentist, voted for Trump, yeah. and he's conservative. And he said, under this tax plan, I would get a tax increase as a dentist. And all these left-wing companies like Apple and Yahoo would get tax decreases. Why would I support this? And I thought that was a fair question. No, it is a fair question. I don't know the details on that with the dentist, but I do know this, that what we've seen is that everybody in America is going to get a tax advantage. They're going to have actually pay lower taxes. So I would really like to talk to the dentist and see how it is that he figured that. Well, I don't know how that happens. deductions, and he's above the threshold. He's not a rich guy. He's a dentist. No. But he's above the threshold where the taxes would increase. I mean, that's... That, I, I, you know, I don't understand that because all the data that I've looked at, that would not happen. But again, uh, I'm, I'm always interested to talk to people. And as you know, what we did today, we had a giant first step today when it comes to tax cuts and job creation. But it's the first step, and we're going to continue to go on. We're going to go with the Senate. The Senate's language will be coming out soon. We'll go to conference, and then we'll go to the White House. So what's still left to be done is still left to be done. And this bill only gets better. But I, here's what I understand. So if I'm a private equity guy, say, okay. I can still still pay half the tax rate of someone who's working for a wage, the dentist I talked to, because the carried interest loophole. Why would we be rewarding 
finance I, in this. I, you, know, you know, I don't see it quite that way in all the data, again, that I've looked okay. at. It doesn't match up with some of the things I'm hearing from what people are saying. Now, uh, having said that, people are going to continue to question and people are going to continue to say this isn't quite matching up and it's not what I thought it was going right. to be. And we're continuing to say, you know what, this bill gets better as each day goes on. Well, we will I'm be getting that. better. So totally it, and that's what's going to happen. But why? Here, here's the thing that made me nervous was reading, and I, maybe it's not even true, but that the corporate rate cuts are permanent, but the rate cuts for individuals sunset after 10 years, they're not permanent. That suggests to me a weird priority. I mean, corporations are doing pretty great. Well, I don't think it sets a weird priority. And, I, and again, we'll see the final version that comes out. But I will tell you this. We have noticed the erosion in our country of corporate jobs. And they're moving overseas. And they're not moving overseas because they don't like America. They're right. moving overseas because they are overtaxed and overregulated. What we are doing are bringing those jobs back home and preventing jobs from leaving. You and I both know that the key to success is a dynamic and robust economy, an economy that grows. And I think a lot of what we look at today we're denying the growth opportunity that's going to take place as we go forward. Well, I'm totally and we for have that. to look at that. But then why not say, look, we'll give you a rate cut, Apple, but you, we have to be assured that you're going to invest that money here. Because there's just no mechanism for making them do that, is there? Well, I think the mechanism is if you have a better environment to work in business-wise, you're going to do it here. I mean, listen, people didn't leave here because they don't like us. They left here because it was such an unfavorable taxing situation. And again, I go back to this. If you're going to have an environment of growth, then let's really have an environment of growth. And I think some of the things that are being ignored is the growth that this tax policy will bring about. It just follows a path of success. And that is the way we're having to go. Now, we're going to continue, and I've said this before, we're going to continue to make this bill better day after day. We're going to get the language from the Senate. We're going to go to conference with the Senate to come up with the final package that will go to the president, and hopefully by right. Christmas we'll have that. But again, but again, a dynamic and robust economy that lifts all boats. Everybody's wages are going to rise, and we're going to hear these conversations from time to time. I just the look at the stock market at all-time highs, and yet the middle of the country is dying. And so I'm just not convinced there's a direct – I want to believe but there don't seem to be a direct line between corporate profits and the company. Okay, the but keep in deficit. mind, you know what? There's a lot of folks that I represent back in Pennsylvania. Yeah. They are going to get yeah. automatically a $2,000 less taxes, right? Well, and about $2,300 more in wages. You put that together, that's dynamic. No, and that that's gives good. people more take-home pay. And with corporations, when we get corporations to stay right here in the United States of America and stay yep. because they want to be here, as opposed to being forced offshore, we win. Every I'm American wins. I hope, that's, I hope that works. It is going to happen. Thank you. It will Very happen. Much.